It's Friday, September 21st, 2012, and you're watching the OS. Welcome to the OS, the show that aims to provide a diverse range of news and opinions on today's consumer technology. For everyone out there that has managed to get their pre-orders in on time, the iPhone has likely made its way into your hands, or at least it will shortly. Apple's new device, which sold over 2 million times in the first 24 hours of pre-orders, has finally arrived at the doors of a lot of people. And for all the people that got one from the OS, congrats. But now that the wait is out of the way, there's probably a lot of you that are either new to the iPhone, or you're not familiar with the brand new features that just came with iOS 6. Among the features that might need some more clarification, iCloud is probably one that you'll want to use, but you may not know where to begin. Andy from the Wolfpack is here to talk a little bit about Android, but luckily he's also taking the time to walk all you new iPhone owners through the process of properly setting up your iDevice with iCloud. Hey, welcome to this week of the OS. First off, I want to talk about the Galaxy Note 2. Samsung saying this week that by mid-November, all the carriers will have released the Galaxy Note 2. So by being the keyword. So that could be before. So the rumored date that we've seen of October 21st for the Nokia Lumia 920 and the Note 2 could be true. Let's look at when would AT&T announce that this date could be coming based on the way they've released their other phones. Uh, something coming from AT&T about October 8th. Let's hope so. But if not, then we're probably looking somewhere around the 1st of uh, November, like November 4th or so. Okay, now I want to talk about making sure that you have your iCloud backup set up correctly on your iPhone. Okay, so here we are on, on my iPhone. And to get into iCloud settings, we're going to go here. And we're going to scroll down to iCloud and excuse me just a second, I'm going to put my finger over an address here. Don't need 100 emails from everyone. You're going to scroll clear down the bottom. You want to have a lot of these on, uh, whichever you want to be backed up with, uh, especially, you know, contacts, uh, mail, calendars, um, reminders. Um, you know, I pretty much have it all on. All right especially find my iPhone, that would be good. So then we're gonna go to, a lot of times I think people look at this storage and backup and think, okay, if I press that, it's gonna start storage and backup. No, it's not. My friends found out the hard way and did not have their set on. And right there's your toggle. You gotta have that on. Uh, it will back it up. I generally plug my iPhone at night and mine, plug, and mine backs up at night. So that's my suggestion to you. Make sure that is toggled on and you can back it up right now. It has to be done over Wi-Fi. All right. Hey, thanks for attending the OS. Make sure you may leave your comments down below and we'll see you next week. Thanks for the demo, Andy. I also use iCloud to back up my calendars, my contacts, my mail, and even the notes that I use for this presentation were all typed on the computer and then automatically synced to the device for me to use later. I think the convenience of this cloud technology is really cool, and I'm hoping that more people enjoy it as well. Moving away from the iPhone, HTC introduced two new devices this week that are aiming to take a little bit of Nokia's thunder away. They've made a couple Windows Phone devices that are actually pretty well specced. To give us a quick rundown on those, here's Aaron Rowe from Technico. Hey everyone, and welcome to the OS. Dialing back some of the iPhone 5 excitement from last week, we're going to look at something that happened on Wednesday when Microsoft and HTC got up on stage to announce HTC's new Windows Phone 8 portfolio, introducing the HTC 8X and 8S. Now, none of HTC's Android designs were recycled here. I mean, these are phones that were built from the ground up with Windows Phone 8 in mind, and they are quite a sight to look at. HTC is employing the same polycarbonate body that Nokia is using on their Lumia line and the 8X is their flagship. The 8X has a 4.3 inch super LCD 2 display with Gorilla Glass and this is a 720p display. It's powered by a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 processor, comes with NFC, 1 gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigabytes of internal storage, no micro SD card expansion on this. I have no idea why these flagship phones are coming out without micro SD card storage, but it's kind of annoying. This will also be one of the first Windows Phone 8 devices from HTC that has Beats Audio built in. As you know, uh, HTC owns a stake in Beats Audio and a lot of their Android lines have it, so this will be a first for a Windows Phone 8 device. On the back, you have your standard 8 megapixel shooter with 
1080p video recording, but here's the kicker. The front facing camera is a 2.1 megapixel camera that can shoot and record 1080p video. That is insane. I don't think any other phone on the market can do front facing 1080p video recording. And that actual lens, it's an 80 degree lens, so you can actually capture more people you know, during a video call, which is really nice. It also comes in four colors. You get California blue, graphite black, flame red, and limelight yellow. So that's the 8X and it's HTC's flagship. Now shifting gears for a moment, you have the 8S, which is, you know, billed as HTC's mid-ranged offering. It has a four inch WVGA touchscreen with a five megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash that's capable of shooting 720p video as a one gigahertz dual core processor, presumably still Snapdragon S4. It comes with 512 megabytes of RAM and comes with four gigabytes of internal storage. But like the 820 from Nokia, this comes with micro SD card support. I understand why they put the micro SD card support on the lower end models, but the high end models, especially when everyone, you know, got onto Windows Phone for not having micro SD card storage in the first place. The 8S shares some of the same color spectrum as the 8X and comes in four colors. Domino, Fiesta Red, Atlantic Blue, and High Rise Gray. Both of these phones are being pegged for a November release. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile are on board. Uh, we don't have any other stuff other than that. Uh, rumors are going around that the 8X is going to AT&T and will be $199 on contract, so that's good to see there. So I'd love to hear what you think. Is the Lumia more your style? Are you looking at the 920 or 820? Are you looking at the Samsung Ateez S for your Nexus phone? Or has HTC been able to inspire you with their multicolored uh, 8S and 8X line? But this is Aaron from Technicove, and I will see you in the next video later, people. New devices are always exciting to see, and those two are pretty cool. I'm sure there are a lot of people that are glad to see HTC has still brought their great reputation for hardware to the Windows Phone platform, and we wish them continued success as they aim to please the Windows Phone community. Speaking of fans and community, there's likely none larger than the huge Android fan base. Due to its level of customizability and its capabilities for expansion, the Android platform has a large community of people who are constantly coming up with new ways of function and expression in their handsets. To give us a rundown on some cool Android updates, Here's Timmy Moore from Android Task Force. What's up guys, it's Timmy from Android Task Force and welcome to another episode of The OS. This week I'm going to be talking about the Galaxy Note and another little app that'll surely make its way onto your phone soon. First let's start with the Galaxy Note 2. Samsung just announced that the Note 2 will be uh, available on five major carriers which include AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, and of course US Cellular. As you remember, Samsung announced the Galaxy Note 2 back in August, and the best part? It includes a quad-core processor in the US, not, not just the international, and the US, and it will support LTE for carriers that support it. We've seen many leaks for the Verizon and AT&T model, heard a little whisper for the US cellular model, so it makes sense for the Note 2 to follow the where the S3 went. It should release on all five carriers by mid-November, and you can find the press release on AndroidTaskForce.com if you like reading those sorts of things. A few days ago, an app called CM10 Downloader released, and it aims to provide a more user-friendly experience for downloading those uh, Cyanogen Mod 10 night leads that everybody loves. Because we've all been there. CM10 releases a new build, you don't really feel like going out to get it, because you don't want to wipe everything, you don't want to reflash everything, but you want it in a nice, organized list. Luckily, another Android developer felt the same pain that you're feeling, and thus, CM10 Downloader has been born. Now you can view the change logs, find nightly builds right on your device, and even download the latest Google apps right from the actual CM10 Downloader app. You can hit up the Play Store link, which will get you installed with the app, and that will be in the description below. But that's what I got for this week, guys. Uh, be sure to check out our live event where we will be talking all about the iPhone 5, if that's your thing, and possibly other topics. It starts today, Friday, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and we hope to see you there. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Timmy. It's cool that Android developers have managed to find a way to solve a problem that's been annoying a lot of tweakers and modders for quite a while. Also, near the end there, you heard him mention about our iPhone 5 event, which is taking place live tonight on this channel. Timmy and myself have both received the iPhone 5 today, and we're going live on this channel to discuss the device and answer any questions that the community might have. We're going to be talking about our personal experiences with the device, and there's no such thing as a dumb question. 
And we invite all of you out there in the OS community to come and join us tonight for a two-hour live stream right here on YouTube starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If it sounds like something you're interested in, please go ahead and prep yourself by visiting the link in the description to see all the event details and to sign up. You should really consider subscribing using the button up above. You can like the video down below, favorite it if you really love it, try to help us grow. But guys, that is the conclusion of this week's OS. Join us every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for some more news and opinions on today's tech world. Have a nice weekend.